Okay, this is a screencast for the yet another Python 3 talk recorded Tuesday, October the 9th. And here we go. So, opening page. Hello, here's who I am, whatever else. And uh, if I had been there, um, I would have taken advantage of the fact that uh, I would be talking to hopefully more than two people. And the unwritten rule among um, authors is that when you have more than two people in front of you, you have to try and flog your most recent book. So I would have a few moments and to talk about Head First Python, um, which is just, I've just started on a, an update, uh, or a revision of Head First Python. So Head First Python 2nd uh, edition should be out sometime after Easter next year. So um, I thought, because I've been talking about Python 3 for the last two years at PyCon, and now this would, be, this would have been my third year, I thought, well, what would be alternative titles for this talk? Um, and one was, oh no, not him again, um, talking about that again. Same subject as before, slightly different slant. Um, why don't you just admit defeat, Paul, and go back to Python 2, a sort of standard um, theme that uh, pops up when you talk about Python 3. And same old, same old, um, Python 3 trumps Python 2, but nobody is using it. So, you know, at this point, probably the best thing to do is to just have a good old cry. Um, because uh, I've been saying this for years and I'm going to continue to say it. I think Python 3 is better than Python 2. And, and I'm still in the minority, but um, hopefully things are changing. So, uh, obviously, it's not all doom and gloom. The big news, and certainly in relation to PyCon Ireland, is that Python 3.3 has just been released at the end of September. And it's here and we'll have a bit more to say about Python 3 later in the talk. Uh, what's been happening since last year? Well, at last year's talk, um, one of the comments at the end was, you know, Paul, you'll be back here this time next year saying exactly the same thing. And it's, it's, sort, of, it's sort of true, uh, although one of the things that I said last year was that I believed that Python 2 was dead, and uh, sure enough, and um, Python 2 hasn't seen an update since last April. So essentially from a core development perspective, Python 2 has, has ceased to, to be. Um, uh, there's been lots of news about Python 3 support. Certainly that's where all the activity um, continues to be occurring and, and occurring more as the months go by. So some of the, some of the bigger projects that have announced support for Python 3, um, the Cherry Pie technology, and um, that is, I think that's actually spelt incorrectly, but anyways, uh, runs now. Uh, Django is currently experimental in 1.4, more than likely going to be official in 1.5. Pyramid runs on Python 3.2 or greater. Um, SQL object and SQL alchemy, the object relational mappers, both run on Python 3 now. Pygame is running on Python 3, and PyQt is also running on Python 3. Um, other projects, uh, the very popular IPython, um, shell replacement or scientific sort of technology it runs on Python 3. WSGI is probably the, the big one and um, that's the standard library and um, that's been upgraded for Python 3 and that's a, that's a huge deal. Um, Jinja 2 templates which are a, a standalone Django compatible template library um, has got experimental support for Python 3, that's important, especially in relation to Google App Engine. Python Anywhere, the cloud service that allows you to run your Python code inside a browser, supports Python 3. I like what BioPython said in their um, documentation. Most things work, which is sort of like, give it a go and see how far you get, um, but it should be okay. And of course, the commercial environment, active state, are supporting 3.x. So there's a lot of things happening in relation to what's going on with, with Python 3 and the support that we're seeing in some of the tools that everybody regards as sort of critical to their day-to-day -day development. Um, some of the ones that aren't quite there yet include the like of Twisted, Turbo Gears, App Engine, Web2Py, um, Soap and Plone and WX Python. And I think that the comment to make about these technologies is the vast majority of them, if not all of them, have made the move to 2.7. So they're certainly heading towards and um, Python 3 and you know, the next the next stop after 2.7 is Python 3 um, and I think some of the things that are that are in uh, 3.3 make it an easier port now 
um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. But there's certainly there's certainly um, movement with these projects that in long term they're going to have to make that move to three because they've they've suddenly hit this brick wall which is two point seven. And I think for any of them to say, look, we're going to sit on two point seven and we're not going to support anything else is is um, dangerous if not sort of the end of those projects because eventually the whole world is going to go that way. Um, inside the mind of the core developers. Uh, I think um, it's, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about Larry Hastings, I'm not sure if he's going to be at the conference or not, but uh, Larry does the um, Radio Free Python podcasts, and this was the, Vicky was very kind to let me borrow this this picture, which is Larry, I think, paying a, a flying visit to, um, to uh, a standard monthly meeting for Python Ireland after last year's PyCon. And the nice thing about um, Larry with his, with his podcast is that he goes and he interviews a whole bunch of people involved in the core, as well as just himself. I mean, he tells us sort of his perspective of what's going on, but he also talks to other people who are, who are sort of a key core developers. And in one of his most recent podcasts, he sort of made the following almost flippant comment. He sort of said, look, the core developers really don't care about Python 2 anymore. Um, um, he said, look, we've moved to three. Three is where everything's happening, and two we're just not really too worried about. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun with, with you guys. And, uh, you know, the, the thought is, ah, yes, oh, master, keeper of the core, now we understand. So um, just to sort of say that this is where the core developers are putting their efforts. And um, the core developers definitely see Python 2 as a dead end. Um, it's still a it's still a valid technology in relation to the amount of code that it's running, but certainly it's a long term dead end. So my thought was then to have a, a little bit of fun and to say, look, if the core developers came from the animal world, could we could we pick a an animal that would um, represent the, the the activity of these core developers and the pace that they're they're working at? And people may have seen these little snippets in in another context, but I thought that they would be good for this. So I sort of thought, well, here's here's what a Python 3 core developer would behave like. So kind of frantic and can't sit still. And the, the joke there is like, you know, all those other penguins are running Python 2. And then, you know, I can say, okay, so that's the sort of pace that, that Python 3 core development is occurring at. We can have another example from the animal world where we can show you what's happening with Python 2 development. And here we go. <laughs> So the message is clear, Python 2 development from a core perspective is over and it's, everything's happening with, uh, with Python 3. And then we can talk about what, what does the, the, the Guido van Rossum think and we can say, well, let's, let's think a little bit about what, what Guido has been saying in the last 12 months and we can pop up this picture, which is actually one of my favorite pictures of Guido because usually he's, I don't know what it is, maybe it's the glasses or the beard or the combination of what, but he tends to look kind of stern, but he definitely looks happy in this one. And, you know, the joke is, you know, it's absolutely nothing to do with the, the glass of free orange juice that he has in his hand. So in, a quote from Guido recently is this, in five years time, Python 3 will be the default. And again, you can, you can joke that, you know, that has absolutely nothing to do with the, the glass of free orange juice that he has in his hand. And Guido actually said that about this time last year at a, at a, a, a talk that he gave at Dropbox when he was asked about the future of, of Python and the future of Python 3. And he said, look, you know, in five years time, that, that, that's the case. And the point, the, the point is, look, you know, if Guido said that a year ago, well, there's only, there's only um, that was October 2011, there's only four years left. So, I mean, that, whether that will get a, a laugh or not, maybe it won't, maybe it will. But, I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely this feeling within the Python core community that, you know, time for two is running out. Um, so what's been happening behind the scenes? Well, we've seen all those projects that are, that are announcing support. And what I did was I, I have a couple of systems, some server systems and some um, 
desktop systems that are running various versions of, of um, Ubuntu and the previous long-term support version 1010 .10 Lucid and um, I did a quick search to, through the available packages and looked for Python 3 and when you do that you get this list of about 28, 29 uh, line items and it shows you that basically back then and with, with that that long-term support version of Linux really what you're getting is the basic Python 3 um, and in fact this is all based on Python 3.1 so there's not an awful lot else happening here but I mean that that um, long-term support version yes it's still being supported I think on the desktop until next year on the server until 2015 so it's still a very valid um, platform on which to build applications and server-side technologies but they have a new long-term support version which was released this year and it is uh, 1204 and um, it's also long-term support and I did a similar search I said give me a search of the Python 3 packages that come with with that Ubuntu and we get multiple pages of um, of uh, Python 3 Python goodies and um, so in here what I t intended to do was to pick out pick out bits of um, of uh, important packages here so on this page it would be like the the crypto technologies have all been all been um, ported over we've got the Caro uh, vector graphics library it's been ported over to Python 3 the next page we've got uh, the Jinja 2 technology and um, we have got Nose and NumPy which I think are important sort of developer tools like for testing and numerical analysis so I mean there's been movement there we've got markup safe um, LXML there's a bunch of libraries here that are cr sort of big libraries that are making the move to Python 3 um, and these are available with with the latest Ubuntu and we can only imagine that the Ubuntu that's coming out at the end of of this month is going to have even more of these goodies so here we've got YAML we've got Zoop um, we've got another page with a bunch of other things so distutils have been has been updated um, and again, really just going through here and picking out ones that are that are interesting. There's the drizzle technologies at the bottom there. We've got um, uh, Markdown and Mock. So we've got support for, for tools that, that Python developers are, are becoming accustomed to having available to them. And then all the PyQT stuff, and there's a whole bunch of it here. And at the bottom, you've got, you've got SkyPy. So like it's pages after pages of, of technology that's now available within Ubuntu for automatic ins installation and um, and that are working with Python 3 and it goes on and I, 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 I didn't count them but I mean there was one page two years ago now there's about six pages of stuff and um, a whole bunch of, of, of tools that we all rely on and all, all use so there's an awful lot of things happening and the world seems to be making that move and certainly the, the Linux distributions are pushing Python 3 in a nice direction um, in early October 2012, PyPy had 1,200 Python 3 specific packages. In fact, it has a bit more than that. But again, that's very healthy. Um, obviously, it, it's a small number compared to the 20 odd thousand that exist on PyPy. But I mean, to have specific Python 3 ones, I mean, certainly that number is heading in the right direction. Um, the truth is, as far as I'm concerned, undeniable, right? And the, the the, what I would say is that you're running out of excuses not to try or run Python 3. And um, all of the excuses that people have had in the past, I mean, they're beginning to disappear. You know, oh, it doesn't run mock. Oh, it doesn't run NumPy. Oh, it doesn't run whatever. I mean, we're seeing that that's changing. And the fact that Django is very rapidly heading in the, in the direction of, of having Python 3 support officially um, is it, very interesting. And I think that will be the last big one when, when people say, oh, look, you know, at the moment they can say, oh, look, it doesn't officially, Django doesn't officially support Python 3, so I'm not making the move. And um, I think that's going to change very soon. And that excuse will be gone as well. So it's, 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 uh, it's worth pointing that out. Um, and then, of course, there's the 3.3 release. So it's, uh, it's, as I said, the most recent one. Um, and again, this is a, a, a shout out from, from Jesse at the Python Software Foundation and you know, his quote is, it's one of the most significant Python releases of Python in, in years. So it really is the first 3.3 that everybody's excited about and has a whole pile of stuff in it that, um, is, again, is, is, is getting us all excited. And the team did amazing work, and, and surely they did. And this is something that, 
that Guido in various posts has also alluded to. In fact, I think this is the first Python that Guido, or the first release of Python that, that Guido hasn't really had much input into, and he can't get over the amount of work that's gone into it and, and being, being, being released as part of 3.3. So the, when, there's a whole bunch of, of stuff that they've put in, and it's all available up on the um, the uh, uh, What's New in Python 3.3 release documentation. Um, the big things for me was that it's got virtual environment support baked in, so if you're using virtual AMP, there's a virtual AMP that comes with as a standard library. And um, the U Unicode strings are back. So this was a Python 2 feature that was broken in Python 3, and they've sort of brought that back. And that certainly makes it a lot easier to port a lot of Python 2 code into Python 3 because that, that U thing was, was an issue. And um, there's a standard mock object, standard mock library um, for certain types of um, processing, specifically did decimal heavy code there's like a huge speed improvement up to 120 times it's it's really really fast they've done a lot of work from a performance perspective got better os and io exceptions and a whole lot more and again if 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 you spend some time with python 3 you'll be or 3.3 you'll be able to be able to talk about this in a bit more detail um, and then of course the python 3.3 bombshell i was reading down through the going through the detailed what's new documentation and I hit this. The array module U format code is now deprecated and will be removed in Python 4 together with the rest of Pi Unicode, the Pi Unicode API. And I thought that has to be has to be a mistake. They must be talking about Python 3.4. They couldn't possibly be talking about 4. So I kept reading and sure enough I hit another one which is sort of the same thing but it says the Pi Unicode has been deprecated in PEP 393 and will be removed in Python 4. All functions using this type are deprecated. And I thought, holy smokes, they're, they're actually thinking about Python 4 already. Now, whether it will be compatible or backwards compatible with Python 3, we don't know yet. But certainly there seems to be a, there's, this is the first time. And what I actually did was I continued to think that this was a typo. So I searched all of the Python website and I started to search the net. And I couldn't find anything in relation to, this was the first sort of official um, announcement or uh, in inclusion of Python 4 as a string anywhere on the Python website and within the Python documentation. So I thought, well, it must be must be happening. And uh, when I was searching the net, it turns out that there's already a Python 4. Um, and it was the strangest thing. It, it's, a, it's a weapon of mass destruction. There is a thing called the Python uh, 4 rocket. So um, I, I thought, you know, this can't, this can't be. How can we possibly have a our, our favorite programming language being superseded by a, by a rocket, um, an order or a missile. And I actually found a little promotional um, video that was made when this particular rocket was, was, was announced and created at the end of the, the first decade of the, the new millennium. So around about 2007, 2008. And when you see this little video, um, you keep expecting Charlie Sheen or Tom Cruise to pop out at some point. But uh, this was actually a serious promotional video that they created for this rocket. So here we go, Python 4 was with us already. 4 air-to-air -air missile is designed for short-range dogfights. The combination of high off foresight seeker and extremely agile airframe allows the missile to encounter almost any threat which enters the pilot's frontal view, regardless of target's evasive maneuvers or countermeasures. Python 4 is the world's most advanced short-range air-to-air missile. A fourth-generation infrared missile, the Python 4 is highly maneuverable with an ultra-sensitive seeker able to effectively defeat fast air targets in close-range dogfights, even at high off-bore side angles. Raphael and Lockheed Martin have agreed to cooperate in the production and further development of the Python, which is currently... So there you go, um, Lockheed Martin and, and Rathion, and whether they'll be happy that we call our favorite programming language Python 4 remains to be seen. There might be a trademark issue there, but there you go. Um, in summary, Python 2 is still dead. I said it was dead last year, it's still dead this year, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna have a miraculous recovery. Um, the Python core developers have basically said all the activity is happening in 3. Um, Python 3.3 is the most exciting release yet. There's a lot of great stuff in it. The Python 4 is a twinkle in the core developers collective eye. Um, best to get ready by moving to Python 3 now. 
Um, let's keep up with what's happening. Let's download, let's install, and let's play with Python 3.3. And um, let's be ready for whatever comes down the road from our, from our core developers. And we'll end with questions. So that, that's the, that was the, the guts of the talk. It's, it's probably not a, a full half hour, so you've got plenty of um, flexibility there to, uh, to change it um, as, as you see fit. And feel free to, to completely change it or take bits or drop bits or add bits. Um, I'll be happy that I'm delighted, in fact, that you're, that you're going to have a go at, at presenting it. So best of luck with that. Great stuff. Thanks.